my number of participants, people are talking. Um, I think I want to talk about a different number, which is percentage of atten uh, courses attended. And so uh, I went to which is on a sort of, at the time, it still exists this way except for less formally. When I went there, it was a, a very, and, and Emily went there as well, um, it was a very sort of strict, so you had IB, and that was primarily either upper class students or white students, and there, there really was overlap. There were, work, there were a few working class students that were in those classes, and there were a few students of color, but by and large, the way that you look when you walked in there was IB, there was Arts and Humanities, which was sort of like this mixed section in which the whole notions of sort of multiculturalism got played up a lot. There was a lot of the ways that pitched that program. And then there was what they were trying to phase out at the time, comprehensive um, programs. And the, the, that would by and large be low income students and students of color. And I, because I had sort of tested really badly all through um, K through 12, or K through 8, by the time I came, I was in this sort of mixed position of sort of in some, some ways with language, like English classes, I could take pre-IB courses, and for my math and sciences, I was in comprehensive courses. And so I was just sort of in this particular space in which a lot of the students around me were clearly not going to graduate. That was clearly the message when you came into classes and the ways that things operated at that school. And so one of the things that happened was my sophomore year, I had a 22% attendance rate. And, um, and the, th the thing that I think is really notable, just as people are talking, and I think that, uh, I know we're going to talk about connections later, but that, you know, I had a lot of friends who also had higher attendance rates, but had way, way more of uh, like institutional sort of lockdown happening. So even if you had like 60% or 70%, you were already being tracked into suspensions, you were being threatened with juvie, like the ways that that went, and that never happened to me. And specifically thinking about the, the way that, I mean, this has sort of been something that has informed a lot of the ways that I think about my own education and why I was given the second chance, this sort of meta theme of white privilege, of what it was about my advisors who were looking out for me, what it was about educators that were looking out for me, but specifically thinking about how low that, that percentage was of 22, which was maintained for two semesters, but there was a quarter system, so two quarters of 22%, and the fact that I never, I, you know, by the, by the time I was meeting with the, you know, I started to have to meet with the police officers and the whatever, and people would come to my house, but that came way later, and the ways that I got out of those things without sort of actually having to change my lifestyle or or even really experience institutional repercussions really made me think a lot because I got to go to an arts high school um, and I finished there. So for my junior and senior year, I finished at the arts high school. And that, that allowed me a door in that I never would have had had I stayed at I certainly never would have had, had there not been all of these extra ways in which people made space for me in the institution that were not being made for the other students that were in the courses. And so thinking about, and that really click, especially it was around racial lines and it wasn't even class at that point, because really the whole way that who was getting tracked out of if you look at even the, the graduation rates, it's really, you know, the story is class and race, but the thing about the, the neighborhood that it was in was that it was really white. And so the ways in which busing happened, happened in very particular ways. And so I, I just think that this question of like attendance rates and thinking about how people who don't get into higher courses like AP and who are in these spaces where people are not thinking you're gonna get into college, like if you can't even pass these basic tests, or like like for me, if you're going to get a 12, 12, be in the 12th percentile for your SAT scores because your math is so bad, there's no way that your teachers are going to interact with you as if you're sort of college bound, which is sort of one of the primary ways I think you're, thought to, you're, you're trained to think about your value as a student when you're in high school.